and this is now our process and this will be our problem statement so what do we have here essentially a hydrocarbon feed which is rich in aromatics is to be separated via a series of separation processes so the main scope probably i'm and you should be trying to wonder what type of hydrocarbons are here what are aromatics remember most of aromatics contain benzene this could be actually benzene toluene uh, helene phenol etc the hydrocarbons most likely are very light gases the ones that are likely to go as vapors or gases and then we want to recover the heavy ones it is sent from a previous plant at ambient temperature so maybe we're in a cold place 15 celsius and it is pressurized to 10 bar so what we're going to do is assume that the 10 bars are directly here in the inlet of our plant now in real life you will see later on that this is not always the case but in this case let's assume so a total of 100 kilomole per hour must be treated so this might be either a coincidence or maybe it's a balance or you want to state that anyways the good thing on aspen plus is whenever you want to change this 100 kilomole you can do it and you don't need to change the pressure sizes and so on it will be scale according to the numbers now most of the hydrocarbons must be recovered and the leftovers will be burned in a combustion chamber maybe in order to recover heat maybe we're using that heat to generate or to warm something we don't know that the only thing we know is that we need to combust most of the gases going off the combustion chamber will burn all hydrocarbons to form carbon dioxide so this is going to be a co2 conversion we're going to assume 100 percent combustion so there is no leftovers of organic material only carbon dioxide the air for combustion was previously adjusted to 50 celsius and 10 bar there is no pressure loss in the combustion chamber so we can assume that this is essentially just a burner and we will see well actually i we don't know the number but we can start with a 1200 kilomole per hour now remember this is air so about 20 percent of that which will be one sixth or 60 then we can do the calculation not make no worries the important part is to ensure the composition of this stream now it can be a little bit tricky remember if instead of air we will have i don't know a rich oxygen nitrogen mix or maybe this is pure oxygen so you gotta ensure to have the correct composition now it was uh here we we adjust the temperature and then we have this drum the drum separates vapor and liquids so this is very important after a flash we gotta treat the liquefied section we must depressurize it in order to continue with the treatment so it goes from 10 bar to 2 bars so that's actually drop in 8 bar now we're talking about this liquid part right here and then as stated here this stream is then fed to a distillation column so unfortunately we don't know which models they are not telling you anything but according to this we have a total of 15 trays and the feed tray must be between seven and eight i will be selecting eight the recommended operation is to have a partial vapor or vaporizer meaning that this goes here some goes as a gas or distillate and some is sent back as a liquid the reflect ratio is set to five molar so once again if you are recycling maybe one mole we are sending five mole back pressure drop is unknown but can be assumed to be low or negligible that means that we can ignore it and at least 20 percent of the feed must be recovered so what does this mean 20 percent of the feed must be recovered so this is kind of tricky actually i need to specify that this is of the initial feed so technically i should have used uppercase so you know this is the feed so if we use 100 this part right here must be 20 percent of that which is 20 kilomole so that's an advantage we now set it up our flow rate here so remember whenever we're using uh, distillation columns it's very important to set up the independent variables 
The distillate is to be treated in a following process. So this is the distillate right here. It must be compressed to a five bar pressure. So that's why we have this compressor and it will be sent to a following process. So the interesting part right here is that the compressor has a 88% efficiency and it can be modeled as a isentropic compression. Now probably you're wondering what happens with the bottoms. Well, apparently, and this is typically a knowledge or because you know it, but if you wouldn't know, well, you will need to simulate it. But let's say that we are actually working in this plant and we know that this is not pure enough for our client. So we must add a further distillation. And this is very common, several distillation columns in order to uh, separate several processes right here. The following column requires a total of 20 trays. That's also very common. Typically you will have a low number of trays until eventually increasing the number of trays to increase purity. And the feed tray is approximate half of these. So let's assume the feed tray is in the 10th tray. It uses already, we already know that, a total condenser, so no need to guess whether or not it's a, similar to this, if this can be assumed, recommended operation, but in this specific case, we know this is a total condenser. Since the distillate is required as a liquid, so that's very typical. Whenever you require a liquid, typically you will add this as a total condenser. Otherwise, you will need to compress it and conform to a liquid. The recommended distillate recovery is 60%. So now, as you can imagine, the distillate is recovering 60% of what? The inlet or the outlet? Or sorry, the inlet of the feed here or the inlet of the column. Now, I, this is also very tricky and I'm going to assume in this specific case, the distillate recovery is 60%. So typically we're talking about the recovery of the column. So I'm going to assume this is 60% of this inlet. So that's kind of tricky. Maybe you're wondering what happens if this cha number changes. Should I will, should I always calculate this number? No, actually we're going to see later on Aspen Plus will allow us to make the 60% directly into the column. The reflux is set to four molar. So remember for every single mole, we are recovering, we are sending back four mole. The pressure drop is unknown, but current process has this part right here, a condenser working at a 1.90 bar and a reboiler working at a 2.10 bar. And this makes sense. Remember that pressure drop goes from top to bottom. The distillate can be sent for storage, meaning that this distillate can go directly as a product, but the bottom must be further pressurized actually add 0.5 bar in order to allow for pressure drop due to frictions. So maybe we're going to send this to another place, which is going to have this pressure drop. So we are adding that pressure in order to get to the required pressure in the following process. The efficiency is 66.7%. And now that was our process. Typically, this is what you will want to know or Maybe your boss tell you and you will need to get all this information in order to get these requirements. So first, we already know this, we need to model the plant using Aspen Plus in steady state. Also, you will want to verify the material and energy balances, how much you're feeding here, how much you're feeding here, and how much are you getting in, this in these streams right here. Now, probably these streams will tell you about the composition, but it's, it's very important that maybe in real life, you don't know what is each stream or you are maybe modeling something new. So you will not know what's this. So just, this is a tip for the first simulation. This will be a stack gas. This will be a liquefied petroleum gas. This will be a C6 and this will be the C7. We also want to verify the purities and composition of the streams, guys. Why? Because that is essentially what bases our material and mass transfer data. You also want to verify what is the temperature, pressure, flow rates of all. Because whenever we're talking about distillation columns, temperatures are typically set up in the reboilers if you don't set them up. So maybe you want to say, well, I want to achieve 99% purity and that will automatically make Aspen change the temperature. 
So in many cases, you will want to check that. Also, for instance, in this valve, if you set up a pressure, typically there is a lot of friction, so there might be a change in temperature in the flow rate. For specific unit operations, verify the relevant results. So of course, if we're talking about the heater, you want to know how much heat are you going to be spending. If you're talking about the combustion chamber, maybe you want to know what is the maximum temperature that it's achieving. Maybe it's something hazardous, so you need to add a cooling system. You want to know how much heat are you releasing? Are we achieving the required heat for a certain process? And so on. The compressor and pumps, of course, how much money are you spending in electricity or in work here? And for the columns, typically you will be checking out the reboiler, condenser duties, and well, currently, I would say that will be good enough. Later, as you continue in your life, you will see that columns have plenty of things to check out, either the size of the trays, sizing between trays, the holes, the setup, the type of trays, and so on. But right now, let's stick to only the purities, flow rates, temperature pressures, reboiler, and condenser duties. And these are the types of unit operations that we gotta try to add. Heat exchanger is only one. Reaction kinetics. And probably you're wondering why am I using a reactor where this is a combustion chamber. But remember that technically, if there is a chemical change and I want to model this as a chemical reaction, I can do it. Momentum operations or pressure changers will be pump and compressor and technically also the valve. Separation process will be these flash drums and the distillation columns. And we are all set to start working in the simulation environment.